Hello everyone and welcome to part A of this tutorial that will cover scripting in Unity using C-Sharp. Uh, I will be using Visual Studio 2015 Community, so if you want to get that, you can get it from the Visual Studio website for free. Uh, you will also need Unity 5, which is the latest version. You can get that from the Unity website. Uh, and once you have those downloaded and installed, we can get started. Okay. So first, uh, what we need to do is set the IDE in Unity so that once you double click on your scripts, it opens up in Visual Studio instead of Mono Develop. So to do that, you can go to Edit, Preferences, External Tools, and in here, uh, you might not find Visual Studio 2015. If it's not here, you can go to Browse, and if you install it in the default directory, it should be in C, X86, and in Visual Studio 14. Common 7, IDE, and then you can scroll down to devemv.exe. So you can double click on that, and now Visual Studio 2015 should show up here, and whenever you open up script, it should open up in Visual Studio. Now that we have everything set up, we can go ahead and make our first script. So first, let's make a folder called scripts in the assets folder, just to keep everything a bit more organized. And once we have that, we can go ahead and right click inside it, create and C sharp script. As you can see, Unity is going to make the script file and give it a temporary name called new behavior. You always want to change that right away as soon as Unity gives you the option to, and that will call ours my script. Okay. Now that's created, you'll you'll notice that um, the class name inside the overview is called my script, just like the script name, and this always has to be the case. You can't change the file name inside of Unity and not change the class name um, inside the script as well. For example, if I change this one to my second script, you'll notice that Unity is going to start saying that the file name does not match the script name and it's going to throw errors and not compile that script. So just keep that in mind. If you want to change the script name within Unity, you have to go into the script itself and change that name as well. So let's change that back to my script. There we go. And double click on the script to see what's inside it. There we go. Okay. As you can see, Unity made two functions in here. One is start and one is update, and these are automatically generated every single time you make a new script. Uh, what you need to know about start is that it's called once when the object is created and it's never called again afterwards. Update, on the other hand, is called every single frame that the object is in the scene and is enabled as well. So if you disable your object, update is never called until you re-enable the object again. Um, we should also talk about debug.log because we will be using that quite a bit uh, throughout the tutorial. Um, so debug.log is useful if you need to know where you are within the script uh, while the game is running or while the scene is running and you want to print something out to the console. The console window you can open using window and console and all the lines that you use debug.log for are going to show up right here. So in start, we can do debug.log start and see what happens when we run the script. Uh, you don't need to worry about the line endings for Unix. Uh, at some point, whenever you open up the script within Visual Studio, it'll ask you if you want to convert them uh, to Windows line endings, and then you can hit yes and then save and these warnings will go away so you don't need to worry about them now if we try to run the scene as you can see nothing happens that's because every single script that you make needs to be attached to an object inside the scene when the scene is running for the script to run so let's make an object a uh, cube for example and drag our script onto the cube inside the inspector you'll see your script show up here and that means that it's already attached and it's ready to go. So if we hit play now, you'll see that it says start. 
and it only says it once. That's because when the scene started, it went in here, it called start, it did the debug.log, and it never went in here again. Uh, if we do a debug.log in the update, on the other hand, and go back to Unity and try to run it, you'll notice that it's calling it every single frame. It first started by calling start and then update every single frame from then on the object is active. If I disable the object, stop, update stops. If I re-enable it, update enables again. And that's pretty handy uh, when you don't want a script to be running anymore to keep in mind. Okay, so now that we know what these two functions do and we know about the debug.log, we can get more into the scripting. Uh, that will be in the next tutorial. This will be it for this tutorial. Uh, if you have any questions or feedback, please leave it in the comment section. Uh, other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.